Well, boys, I have gone into a derby in thinking, you know, in terms of Newcastle United, with uh, more trepidation. Um, Lee, having seen what you saw last night, um, various setbacks, almost too many to mention. Um, Newcastle-wise, how do you feel going into Sunday? I'm extremely concerned. I think it's uh, definitely the biggest derby probably since the playoff game mm. in 1990. That was a, you know, top-flight place, you know, up for grabs. Then now there's one at stake. You know, Newcastle lose this one, then you know I'm, I definitely fear that they could make that drop into the, the championship. Now I, I hate to say it, but you know, once you know Barton and Owen went off last night, I was I was looking around the pitch and I couldn't see anything that gave me, you know, any encouragement to say we can get out of this. You know, 23 points, a lot of uh, points to make up now, and we'll run out of games as well. And February, February on, you know. This is the first game against Sunderland, so yeah. I mean, this for me is the start of quite a tough running on paper. But the fact is, I wouldn't back Newcastle to be any Premier League side right now. Just the total lack of momentum, total lack of leadership, mm -hmm. lack of bodies. Yeah. Uh, first and foremost, and I've got absolutely no confidence that they're going to address that properly before the transfer window closes on Tuesday. Look, you can't, you can't see it, can you? I mean, they've had how long have they known they needed to strengthen the squad? Mm. I mean, they've known. Right. Since the end of last season, mm. not not even the end Stop. of the Stop. last transfer yeah. window. It's gone on for a few years, and it's, yeah. it's it's been going on. Um, this just doesn't seem to be any movement. They seem to think that bringing in Peter Lovenkrantz on a free transfer to the end of the season counts as some sort of wonderful signing. I'm afraid it's not. Um, the one thing when you looked at Newcastle squad that you thought was the difference between them and the other teams was Michael Owen. Michael mm. Owen's goals. You thought well. No, no one else in that relegation battle has got someone like Michael Owen who's going to get you a goal every other game. He's now gone for yeah. eight weeks, probably. Yeah. Um, they still haven't signed a left back, they haven't signed a right back, haven't signed a creative midfielder. There's you know, four or five days left. Unless they do something dramatic in the next four or five days, I'm like Lee, I'm, I'm beginning to get really concerned. Exactly, you just can't see them making that sort of impact in the transfer market in this state of time. Well, we've, we've had a little insight into sort of the goings on behind the scenes into what actually happens with transfers at Newcastle this week without going into it it doesn't inspire confidence um, they've, they've moved too late in the market for the players they've needed since back in the last season as Kevin Keegan pointed out you know the back in the last season needed to invest massively haven't done that Joe Kinnear talks about the credit crunch now um, it's fine to say now that Mike Ashley has been affected by the credit crunch we should have been told that earlier you know rather than give the fans false promises about investment being made. Mm -hmm. um, quite frankly, although it was, yeah, luck you know, played its part last night, Owen and Barton went off, but Newcastle were only ever one injury away from an absolute catastrophe in this transfer window, and that mm -hmm. injury was mm -hmm. to a top goal scorer. You know, without Michael Owen, as you say, where are the goals going to come from? Um, I just Not think it's an absolute, absolute shambles, absolute shambles from start to finish, from top to bottom. Um, and I dread to think defeat on Sunday, for me, could bring about, you know, absolute revolt on the terraces. You know, mm. I, I dread to think what the next home game attendance would be if they lose on Sunday, and I can see it happening because I think Sunderland are a side that could do Newcastle. They'll real be damage. rubbing their hands with glee. If you're a Sunderland fan today, tomorrow building up this derby, you're going to be thinking, right, this Absolutely. we're going to go there, and you know, we're going to be favourites. Yeah. They're going to, you know, they look like a club in disarray, and they want to put the boot in. Yeah. I mean, this is this is great for them. If you're a Sunderland, you'll be, you will be just you'll be like thinking, oh, great. Mind you, if they lose it, Sunderland. Um, then you know they're going to be pretty sick, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, so, I mean, uh, the, I think the way some of them have got to approach it, yeah, it's a derby. Yeah, as you say, they can put the boot in. But I think the way they got to approach it is saying, look, three points here, and we are, you know, so quite a long way out of it. You know, six we've got points a good clear in Newcastle. And in this this league this season, you know, six points is like twelve, fifteen points in any other season because it's been that tight. Um, I just can't see Newcastle being able to handle the likes of CC and Jones if CC and Jones get decent service. I can't see Newcastle keeping a clean sheet, and at the other end, I can't see Newcastle scoring many. Um, obviously, Martins might be back. Which Martins are we going to get? Are we going to get the Martins that, you know, is ruthless up front? Or are we going to? I feel we get the Martins that is just trying too hard, trying to do everything himself, and turns out looking like. Well, you're you're also pinning your hopes on a player like Mark Viduka to come back. How long is Mark Viduka going to stay fit? And Alan Smith, who Five hasn't? Minutes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and Alan Smith who hasn't stayed fit for. Exactly. You know, um, well, no, he hasn't scored a goal, sorry. Mark scored scored goal, fit. You know, yeah, so exactly. Done nothing when he was fit, so why we should be pinning our hopes on him, I don't know. I mean, I, mean, I think he's got to go the other way. I think he's just got to put his faith in, he's got no other choice but to put his faith in people like Andy Carroll, mm -hmm. Kazenga Lawalawa, 
players that want to play for the mm. shirt. You know, it's a derby. The, the fans will give it them every encouragement that they need. And I think they've they've got to throw them in at the deep end now because they have run out of options. Mm. I've got no faith in people like Cisco, six million pound, just thrown down the gutter. You know, that that was half of the the, the million of money, wasn't it? And yeah. Then, and then ten went on Colaccini and. Oh, it's it was pretty damning when Joe Kinnear says yesterday, I've got one fit striker, Andy yeah. Carroll, yeah, and he's exactly. got Cisco he was, sitting on the bench. He's yeah. got exactly. six million pounds worth of yeah. striking time. Andy Carroll like. was, what, fifth, sixth in the pecking order yeah. in the summer? Yeah. I couldn't, you honestly couldn't make it up. I mean, if you looked back nine months, I'm, you know, I'm writing a piece this week, look back nine months to the last derby at Newcastle, everything seemed to be moving forward yeah. slowly, yeah. albeit for Newcastle. You had Kevin Keegan in charge, you had a team that wanted to play for him, and now you've got an absolute shambles. There's no other... There's no other description for it, and there's absolutely no excuse for it. And come Tuesday, if that transfer window, you know, shuts, and Newcastle have lost a derby, and they haven't addressed the absolute fundamental failings in that squad, then I'm sorry, but Mike Ashley and Derek Lambius, who you're going to be talking to next week, Touchwood, mm. you know, they deserve all they get in my book. I hope they, I hope they, you know, they honour that and they do. Let no matter what happens, I hope you do get the chance. Well, that, that, yeah, that would be my worry. I mean, uh, you know, derby <laughs> defeat. <laughs> Nobody through the nobody through the transfer window, you know. I think I get turn up. If before we send everyone suicidal <laughs> watching this video, I mean, I guess the flip side, Lee, is that if they win the derby in the state that they're in, mm. that could maybe be the little catalyst, the little spark that gives them that little mm. bit of self belief again. And as you say, if the young kids come into the team, mm. they're part of this derby victory. That could be a little bit of a, a tonic, couldn't it? Well, I see what you're saying. There's two ways looking at that, though, because. The other side of it is, if they do win, then it, it perhaps papers over the cracks yeah. as well, and that that leaves Newcastle in a potentially even more dangerous position uh, if people get too carried away with it. But my my overall fear is that you know people mention Leeds United, Man City, Nottingham Forest, all these teams that have gone down is is not just going down this season, but going down the next season as well mm. because beneath the first team, the the young kids in the reserves, they're not even ready for the reserves, and no. they're, mm. they're just too raw. And they'll not be able to survive. That's all they'll have if they go in the championship. Because yeah. all the stars will go. They'll be stuck with, with these players. They won't have much money to bring in. And, and championships are very difficult, as teams like Southampton will tell you, yeah. Charlton Athletic. You know what I mean? So, League One, you know, <laughs> you mentioned with suicidal, you know what I mean? <laughs> to go down two divisions is not a. It's not um, unthinkable now, no. unfortunately. It's, it's, it's well, they have, they have to stay up, don't they? They have to stay up. Yeah, I mean, that, that's the bottom line. This season, but no this, matter how they yeah. do it, whether it's scrape on the last day of the yeah. season, they stay up on goal difference, they stay up on goal scored, whatever it is, they've got to stay up this season. But this season, seen the unthinkable happened so many times. You know, KK walking out again in the circumstances were just, was just incredible. You know, the fact that he walked out maybe wasn't a huge surprise to people. The reason why he did it and the, the circumstances behind it, you know, that was unthinkable. Shay Given being so hacked off, you know, this is the most loyal servant Newcastle got, so hacked off that he actually moves to a club that is only one place above Newcastle in the Comedy League. You know, the fact that he actually goes to Manchester City, who themselves, you know, are going through a bit of a nightmare in terms of PR, um, got no hope of winning anything this season. And yet, no one is questioning his logic in leaving. He's had no criticism from fans at all. No, exactly, yeah. I mean, he'll leave a hero. It just says everything for me.